Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you again for another author interview. I hope you're having a great week. It is um, the week before Easter, often known as Holy Week. So for those of you who celebrate Easter, um, happy Holy Week to you. For those of you who don't celebrate Easter, happy Tuesday. (laughs) And I hope you're having a great week. So as I said, I do have an Another author interview for you today. I was um, pleased to interview John H. Brown this past weekend about his new book, Augie's War. Uh, let me give you the description of that book. Um, Augie's War is an outrageously funny but deadly serious novel of war, family, and coming of age. Augie Compton has to find a way to survive his deployment to Vietnam, so he escapes the horror and insanity of war by retreating to his safe haven, a cerebral sanctuary where he can reflect on family and friends, humorous incidents, and a coterie of unforgettable characters from back home. But now, as his tour is about to end and the war intensifies, he faces a legal and moral dilemma when corrupt superiors make criminal demands on him. If he refuses to comply, he might end up dead a victim of friendly fire. So now it's up to Augie to survive both the war and the demands of disreputable disreputable officers in order to make it home in one piece. So this is um, a book about the Vietnam War in some ways, but it is... Let me back up and say that I was a history major. I'm sure I've mentioned that before. And um, a lot of history centers on politics and war, understandably, those things kind of, you know, drive the world a lot. War was, while I understand its importance in history, the the details have never been my favorite thing to study. So I'm not, um, I'm not immediately drawn to books about war necessarily. Um, I, yeah, I do, I, I've talked about um, World War II novels. I, I do read a lot of World War II novels, but if you have noticed, it's the relationships in those stories. It's the, the story beyond the war. And I haven't done a lot of reading of, of novels or books about Vietnam. So on the one hand, this was really interesting to read in um, an era of history that I haven't read as much on. But also, it is it is a book about Vietnam, but it's so much more than that because it's about relationships. It's about the things that Augie struggles with. It's about the things that Augie does and thinks about in order to make it through the situation that he's in. So it is... Um, almost two parallel novels where you have Augie in Vietnam and then Augie in Riverview where he grew up. So he, in his mind, he goes home to Riverview and he thinks about everything that led up to his deployment to Vietnam. He thinks about the people that he came in in contact with and there are some really interesting secondary characters, not even secondary characters, just characters that he talks about briefly uh, that were in his town that he grew up with uh, that made an impression. And so, yeah, there's a lot of humor. Um, It is a very serious topic. There are very serious issues and dark issues that are dealt with in the book. And yet, there is warmth, there is humor, and um, I really loved all of the exploration of relationships and the way those relationships and the familiarity of home can really help someone like Augie in the situation that he finds himself in. So that is the description of the book. That is uh, my brief synopsis of the book. And now let's let John talk about his book. So again, the book is Augie's War. It is by John H. Brown. And I do have actually signed copies 
of the book to give away. So if you are interested in this book, stay tuned to the end of the episode and you can find out how to enter to win a copy of Augie's War. In the meantime, let's go ahead and turn to that interview with John H. Brown. Hi, John. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Good to be here. It is great to have you here, and we are here to talk about your book, Augie's War. Before we get to the book, though, um, I would love to just get to know you a little bit, so if you could share a little something about yourself. Sure, sure. Uh, Well, I guess I can just tell you, first off, uh, I am uh, a senior citizen. I'm uh, 73 years old. Uh, I live in Charleston, West Virginia. I'm originally from a little town in northern West Virginia called Clarksburg. That's where I was born and raised. And uh, while my name is Brown, uh, my father, who is Irish, uh, moved to where my mother lived in West Virginia, and she is Italian. And so I grew up with uh, an ethnic uh, Italian-American influence, a large family. My grandfather, who came over from... um, Calabria in around 1900, um, worked in the coal mines for uh, for about 15 years and then um, saved his money and built a bakery. So I grew up working in my grandfather's bakery and surrounded by my cousins. And so that influence was a big part of, uh, of uh, my upbringing. Eventually, um, went to uh, college. I graduated from West Virginia University in 1968. Tried to put it off as long as I could because the the Vietnam War was raging and wasn't particularly interested in, in, in going there. But unfortunately, got drafted, went to Vietnam, served a year there, came back and uh, uh, basically wanted to write about my experiences over there. I'd always been a writer. I'm a journalism graduate from West Virginia University and uh, started writing. But then um, life got in the way, got married and um, had a child and had to get a, a, a real job. So I had to put the book on the back burner and it, it stayed there. Every now and then I would you know, pull it out and start writing something, but it basically stayed there for almost 50 years until I re- retired from my public relations business and uh, about two and a half years ago. And that's when I began uh, writing Augie's War. Okay. So it sounds from what you just shared about yourself and from what and from the book that this is uh it's it's listed as a novel but it sounds kind of like a a fictionalized memoir somewhat. Well, you know what it's um uh, people ask me that question all the time and certainly uh one of my college English professors when I was uh, in school we were talking about fiction and writing and nonfiction and basically said that no matter what you do, you need to write about what you know. It mm-hmm. becomes evident, even even if you're a scholarly person and you write about something that is inauthentic, if people pick it up. And so, yes, it's, it's semi-autobiographical, I suppose. Uh, Augie, in a lot of ways, re, re, uh, resembles me uh, in terms of some of my experiences. And so, yeah, but it, but it's, uh, but it is fiction. I mean, I, the, the, I changed the name of the, my hometown, the Augie's the hometown, and, and but it is set in uh, the early parts of it are set in in West Virginia, but uh, yeah, so I guess I guess there are elements of auto, autobiography in it, uh, mm-hmm. but again, it's it's uh, a lot of it is uh, just out of the diseased mind of uh, of, of me. <laughs> So what was your jumping off point? What was your, your inspiration for the book? Well, you know, I, I've always been a big reader. I've, I've, I've read a lot of different things. And I was really, uh, when I was uh, younger, I read a lot about World War II co- growing up and in college and was really um, influenced by Joseph Feller. And I don't know if you've read his book, Catch-22. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it, I think it's one of the, the great novels of the last century. Uh, and it, it's a, it's a almost, um, and it was kind of, you know, I think it was published in the sixties or maybe even in the late fifties, but it was, uh, definitely g- gave you a different look about military, about the military industrial complex, about, uh, wars and who fights them and how insane they are. And I was really taken by him. And, and I thought at so- some point, 
uh, I'd like to write, not necessarily like Joseph Keller because he, he's a, a great writer and I wouldn't want to try to mimic him. But when I got in the Army and, and I had some experiences, I realized a lot of the stuff that he wrote about, even though it sounded really crazy, was kind of realistic. I mean, truth sometimes is stranger than fiction. And so when I began to write the book, um, I thought, well, you know what? That's an element that, that I really need to uh, talk about. And, that, and in my novel, there are a lot of um, uh, interesting characters, and some, some of which, some of whom are, are strange. And, uh, but, but again, um, I think that they, they represented kind of what we as soldiers had to deal with, uh, particularly as it related to the 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 officers and the people that ran um, our our division where I worked. So I, I use that, and I also I, I like to think of my book as as more than a, a war book because uh, when I was writing it, I was really concerned that it would just it would you know there would people people within a certain demographic would only be interested in it, and so I went to great lengths to have. Um, about 10 professional women, friends of mine, be beta readers of the manuscript. And so they, they really helped me a lot, gave me some pointers, told me what they liked and didn't like. So I think ultimately um, the finished product is really about war, yes, but it's also about coming of age. It's about family. And um, I think, and this is no criticism of people who have written about Vietnam, a fiction about Vietnam, but most of them are kind of blood and guts, and they don't really get into the um, the, the real lives of, of the men and the women who served over there. Love interests, um, you know, uh, home, family. And, and I think probably there's as much of that uh, in my novel as there is about the actual Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah, Augie tends uh, to take his home life um he he brings it with him to Vietnam, and that 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 kind of helps him yeah. to cope. So we get we get a lot of the backstory then of his family through that. I am going to jump in here so that we can take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about Augie as the main character and more about the book in general. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with John H. Brown about his book, Augie's War. What about Augie do you think will resonate with readers? Well, you know, I I think I think that the the, the human experience, uh, our daily lives, I think that people will recognize in Augie a lot of the things that if they come from a large family, for example, they'll recognize the, uh, uh, the, the importance of that. They'll, they'll identify with him uh, as being in a certain social class. He, he certainly, his family uh, wasn't wealthy, um, but they had a lot of, um, a lot of uh, wealth in other ways. I mean, uh, there was love in the family. Uh, there was hard work. Um, that you could depend on people. So I think in, in, in the, the human side of, of Augie's War, uh, the characters, I think, w- will be easily identifiable, but and also kind of unique. I think mean, there are certain people uh, in our country who uh, may be second, third, fourth generation. Uh, we know we're all a land of immigrants, uh, but and they may not uh, recognize uh, some of the ethnic uh the kinds of factors that I bring into the novel. And I think, and, and the other thing that I wanted to do was, uh, and I think if you read the book, you recognize there's a lot of humor. Some of it's kind of offbeat, but uh, some of the characters are really kind of humorous. It's kind of a dark 
um, novel in that respect. It, it's darkly funny. I had one review said that Augie's War was a grim but very funny um, war novel. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people enjoy the humor, my, my kind of weird sense of humor, I guess, comes through. But, uh, you know, that the only way you get through things like that, you know, very, very traumatic experiences, I think, is to have a sense of humor and to find something funny in in an otherwise very uh, volatile, dangerous environment. And when I was in Vietnam, that's certainly, we we took every opportunity that we had to kind of lighten things up because there was so much that was dark around us. And uh, in any event, I, I wanted to show that, that uh, you know, that, that you can survive in a lot of ways. And the way Augie survived a lot, was through his friends over there that he served with, very good friends. And and then when things got really bad, he would flash back to growing up and some, some of the people that he grew up with, his family, others, and remembering incidents, particularly humorous incidents, uh, that helped him get through the, the experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, this is based partly on some of your experiences, but uh, did you do any particular research for the book? Oh, yeah. Um, one of the great things, you know, I don't know that I would have the patience. If I had written this book, if I, if, if you told me to write this book 30 years ago, or tw- even 25, uh, I probably would I would have been too lazy to spend all my hours in the library looking things up. But but thank goodness for the Internet and, and <laughs> Google. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a vir- virtual encyclopedia. And so I wanted to make sure that everything, even though this is fiction, when I talked about events that happened, um, the historical uh, events were really important to, for me to get right. So I had the dates are right. Um, you know, well, while I knew a lot about weapons because you know, I handled them, I went to great lengths to make sure that when I talked about uh, certain um, artillery pieces, for example, or, or aircraft that, that I got the terminology right. And I depended on a lot of friends of mine who served in Vietnam, uh, a cousin of mine who flew um, a C-130s uh, in and out of Vietnam. Uh, so, I mean, I had a lot of, I did a lot of that. Plus, I just, I just was very careful to make sure that everything that I said in the historical context was real. Uh, you know, I talk a lot about you know, when Augie gets drafted, right before, right before he gets drafted, he graduates, he's going to get drafted. In the spring of that year that he graduates, three or four monumental things happen. First, the Tet Offensive was in February of 68. A month later, President Johnson decides because of the war, he's not going to run for re-election. A month after that, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King is assassinated. And then in June, Bobby Kennedy is assassinated. You know, mm-hmm. they were burning down the cities. And that's that's the environment under which I went into the military. I mean, so I I give Augie, Augie is experiencing those, those same kind of historical um, happenstances that things that are going on and they affect him. They affect him in basic training. There's a, a major racial divide that he is coming from his background, very sheltered life is, is, is he just, he just can't believe how people uh, don't like him because of the color of his skin. It's kind of mm-hmm. ironic. And in one of the passages, you know, he's confronted by an inner city black kid who basically he tells him, said, you know, you've been, Messing over the, the the black man for four hundred years, he said. Well, not me. He said, you, "You're you're you're after me because of the color of my skin." And so the, the black guy, kid says, "Touche," and he uses an epithet. But in any event, so the, all of those things were a part and parcel of, of the, the mindset that I had when I was writing this book to, to recall incidents and historical facts that really. Um, combined uh, to to make this um, uh, a total experience. It, it's it's certainly a literary fiction, but it's also historical fiction. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, how did you kind of 
as you were writing from your own experience, but uh, also making it a novel, how did you go about um, separate, you know, kind of choosing what was autobiographical, but what was fiction? Was, was that conscious or did it just kind of flow out of your writing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I look, it's a little of both, obviously. I mean, I, I had the experience that uh, Augie, when he gets to, to Vietnam, he's fortunate in that he was in a rear area, as I was. He becomes an awards writer, as I was. So a lot of those things are fairly specific. On the other hand, some of the things that happened to him and some of the things that happened to his friends, uh, I did not have those experiences. I, I experienced them kind of secondhand. But some of the trauma, I mean, uh, you know, there, uh, we were attacked frequently. We, um, we were fortunate. I was very fortunate not to be out in the boonies and, and walking in the jungle. But what would happen to us is that they, they would have ground attacks on our base and we would have rockets almost, you know, every, you know, multiple times a week in the middle of the night. Uh, so I shared some of that, uh, but also some of the characters. Uh, I extrapolated. Uh, I like to say the insanity of some of the some of the, the the officers that we've had. I mean, we were kind of unfortunate to, to where I was to have a division that was made up. It was a hodgepodge of, of people who were kind of misfits from other units that were to form this division. What happened was they they decided to. They needed a big U U.S. Army division in the northern part of Vietnam, where I was. And uh, the year before I got there, they put together this division, called it uh, uh, the AmeriCal Division. And a lot of the, the uh, commanders and officers were the ones that the units that they were previously in wanted to get rid of. So they sent them up to uh, our division. So they, we, okay. where I was, if you remember the My Lai Massacre, was about – Four or five miles from where I where I served, and it happened a year before I got there. But the same uh, command structure was in place when I got there. So we weren't, you know, I didn't have great respect for the military. Believe me, I, and uh, I wasn't an anti-war person at all. I, I think now now I am. I mean, I can't believe we're, we've been in Af Afghanistan longer than we were in Vietnam, and we just seem don't seem to learn our lessons. But I won't get into a political discussion. But back then. You know, I, I felt it was an obligation to go. I was drafted. Uh, I didn't go to Canada. Uh, I, I, I sometimes times think it was more courageous. It would have been more courageous to go up there uh, with with what you had to, uh, you know, suffer in terms of family loss and that sort of thing. But um, you know, I went, and um, these things that, that once you get there, you go through. You know, sometimes with uh, your eyes wide open, but you don't. You don't. You can't expect what you, what happens to you. It's so, so different from what you think. Um, and so I try to convey some of that in in the novel. It is time to take our second break of the podcast. But when we come back, we'll be talking some more about um, how the writing process for this book was for John and some of his other works, and how writing those may or may not have differed from writing this novel. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with John H. Brown, author of Augie's War. So how how was writing the novel for you? Did you feel like it was somewhat cathartic um, after your experiences in Vietnam or was it? You know, I never right, thought ahead. of it. I never thought of writing it as a means of catharsis. Um, but after I got through with it, I, I, I'd sent one of my uh, part of the manuscript to a friend of mine who uh, was an infantry forward observer as a lieutenant, and he was really in the bad stuff all the time. So I just sent it to him to, for his reactions to, to tell me if I if I was on target about certain things, and he wrote me this really long email response that really didn't have much to do with any kind of criticism of the, of the novel. He said he 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 thought I was I was always a good writer and he enjoyed the story. And then he went on to talk about how he thought that I was trying to expiate in my the, the, my experience, you know, get it was catharsis that that this was a a means of me dealing with my negative experiences over there. And I got to thinking about that. You know, I never really thought of it that way because I didn't have the terrible experiences that a lot of my friends had. I mean, I mean, it was it was dangerous, and you know, um, I, 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 I there are certain things that I'll have dreams, you know, twice a year about that that bother me. But I, and I, I got to thinking about it. And I said, you know what, that 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 was such a life changing experience that maybe he maybe he's there's an element of truth in that. Maybe part of that, but I didn't go in intentionally to write this book to to. Uh, you know, just let it all out because mm -hmm. that wasn't that that, that that wasn't the way I, I started writing it. But reflecting back on it now, and I, I go back and I'll read passages and I'll say, you know what, that probably that that part of the story was probably uh, me, and and uh, writing that may have been, um, you know, helpful. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, you mentioned that you have a journalism major, so um, talk about writing fiction as opposed to writing, you know, the, the writing that you've done throughout your career. Um, did yeah. you just, yeah, sure. just talk about that a little bit? Well, you know, um, I, um, I've i been a, a wine and food writer in West Virginia since 1981, and I, you know, I wrote a weekly wine column in in the local daily newspaper for about 10 years and then I, I i write now about twice a month in the sunday newspaper and i write a monthly column for a statewide business pub, pub, um, uh, publication in any event i always thought that right i always loved to write i mean writing's hard um but i was trained as a journalist and you you write you know, you're you're more concise and that sort of thing. So writing the novel is a lot different from that. I think the reason my book is only about 240 pages is that journalism kind of thing. I mean, I probably I I don't expound extensively on you know a scene. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing was that I I wrote the wine columns and the and the food columns as much I was. Um, told my wife I'm kind of kidded about it I said you know this is training to write the great American novel I wanted <laughs> to keep my skills skills up and and of course in my business I have sm a small public relations business which my son um, runs now and we you know, writing was an everyday thing whether it was a press release whether it was um, you know writing a speech for someone so writing I think all of that really helped me to keep my skills up but nothing you know, nothing's quite like writing a book. I mean, I, I kind of tried to outline it. What happened was when I when I retired, I, my wife said, you know, um, honey, you, you can't start drinking wine at 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I said, why not? You know, I have a lot of wine here to drink. But, but I'm a home winemaker, too, so I've been making California wine, you know, get the grapes from California. I mean, I've gotten grapes from Italy. This year we've got, um, a barrel full of Amador County Zinfandel right now oh, in okay. my son's basement. So I've been all over the wine world. I mean, I've been certainly to California a number of times, been to Italy six or seven, France, 
you know, Portugal. So we've traveled a lot, and all of it's around food and wine. Because we would, we you know, we we visit wineries. We this is the best restaurants we could, and so that you know, doing that was very, uh, and I still do it. I mean, I've got a um, a um, right down for this. It's a Charleston Gazette Mail, and it's a blog and a column called Vines and Vittles. So if you, anybody want out there was interested, you could go to the Charleston Gazette Mail in West Virginia and just look for Vines and Vittles, and that's. You can, the, the, the columns are archived back, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. But, and, and I write about food, again, as much as I do wine. I never write about a wine, recommend a wine without recommending what I think would, we sh- you should pair with it with food wise. I, I think wine alone is, is kind of only half as good as it could be when you have it with food. But so any of that, the, those, those uh, experiences that I've had, and I continue to have writing. I think, um, I, I think I'm I'm more patient than probably people who have never written before who try to write a novel because it's hard work. It, it, it really is, and mm-hmm. the story changes. Thank goodness for my wife because she was my daily editor and um, no holds barred kind of person. And it was good for me to have her to do that. And then I actually hired an, uh, a professional editor at the very end to look at, at my manuscript. So, you know, I think I, I, I just wanted it to be as as close to perfect as, as possible in terms of not so much the story because people can like or not like the story, but the way it was presented, the manuscript itself in terms of, um, you know, the um, – the words and the phrases and the spelling and the punctuation and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then out of your unique experiences, you know, of, of writing, would you have advice for aspiring authors? You know what? It's hard for me to give advice to people, but I, the only thing I can say is people always talk about, well, what do you do when you have writer's block? And we all get it. I, I, I'm, I'm writing, uh, uh, the novel now, and I've, I've kind of kind of gone through a dry spell. But what what works for me is, regardless of whether I think I I know where I'm going, I need to start writing. So eventually, as I'm sitting there and I'm beginning to write and forcing myself to write to add to the story, it's it kind of comes to me. And sometimes it comes right away, and other times it just takes me a while, and I. I, I find that if I just force myself to write for a couple of hours anyway, uh, then put it down and come look look at it the next day. Uh, I, I either like it or don't like it, but it, I can then I can work on that. I can edit that part. It's it's putting together, you know, a ton of little pieces of writing and structuring it. Uh, you know, that's a hard part too. You know, there has to be a reason to write. I mean. It, 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 you can't just write vignettes unless you just want to write a short story. So ultimately what you're writing in terms of a novel, I guess any, even nonfiction is you have to have a point. You have to, you have to keep people interested in, you know, once you get all this writing in, in some sort of a form, then you may, what I've ended up doing was moving chapters around and making sure that there were transitions. So I think the, the only, the, the major advice I would give to somebody is if, if you want to write, and you're concerned about, well, what do I do? Pick a topic first and then start writing. And it seems, for me, it comes eventually. I don't know, you know, it must be a subconscious kind of a um, an effect that, that's, a, that's a play, but that's how it works for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you for that. And you mentioned that you're working on another novel. Can I... Is there anything you can tell me about that novel? Well, you know, if, if I tell you that it's a sequel, then you'll 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 know uh, that Augie survives, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it is not, it is it is it is in the same it's some of the same characters, and it is about um, uh, kind of about when Augie comes back, okay. and um, um, if he comes back. It, right. but, so it's, but it's, it's set in the same Augie. world at any rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay. You know, my, I started it probably a couple months ago, and I'm, 
I don't know, I've got seven or eight chapters, and I, I think I know where I'm going, but again, <laughs> I have to sit down and, and see where it takes me, where the, you know, the spirits move me. Right, and if your characters are like any of the other characters that I talked to authors about, they may change your direction. No, no question. Absolutely no question. Yeah. I've got a love interest in this one that I just wrote about. And all of a sudden, she's, I mean, I've kind of fallen in love with her. Uh, but <laughs> she, she's she's moved, she's moving the story um, in a different direction. So in any event, it's, you know, sometimes it's fun. Other times you, you'd say, boy, this is kind of drudgery. So then you have to leave it for a while. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you may open up a bottle of uh, Barolo or Cabernet Sauvignon or something. and sit on the deck and look at the stars, look at the sky. Right. Come back. Right. So when you um, you said that you uh, are an avid reader, do you have um, other favorite authors or genres besides yeah, the I mean, you I, mentioned? I, I, I'm kind of a uh, – you know what? I don't read – the only nonfiction I, I really read on a regular basis, I don't, I, I don't like to read self-help books and that sort of thing. I like biographies. And I'll, and I'll mm-hmm. read a biography, but but really I read fiction, and I read kind of, you know, John Sanford, you know, like the Prey books. I'm reading a, a book now by C.J. Box, who writes about this guy Joe Pickett, who is a uh, he's a game warden in in Wyoming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I read everything that um, that um, uh, James Lee Burke has written. You know, James Lee mm-hmm. Burke who writes. Dave Robichaux books. So I, I mean, I've read I've read most of the Vietnam uh, novels that have, that have been published that uh, or that, that you've heard of. So, but I always have at least two going, and I love science fiction. So I, mm-hmm. so I read I read science fiction. So I've always got at least two books that, are, that I'm reading, and um, I, you know, it's just always been a, a, a great fun for me. Great getaway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, do you have a do you have a excuse me? Do you have a website? Um, and where can people yeah. find you on social media? Yeah, you, yeah. My website. It's real simple. It's, uh, you know, www.augieswar.com. And Augie's War is one word: a u g i e s w a r. dot com. And on that, you'll you'll find reviews and that sort of thing. You know, fortunately, my book. I just checked Amazon this today. It isn't super widely read, but there on Amazon there are 25 reviews, and all of them are five stars. Oh, and nice. on good and on Goodreads there are multiple reviews, um, and there I think an average of like 4.3 out of five. So it's been well received. Um, it was a, a BookBub re- and if you know about BookBub, mm-hmm. uh, that it, 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 you know BookBub chose it uh, last fall for. Canada, the UK, India, Australia, New Zealand, and I've gotten a bunch of comments from readers there who've liked it. So, I mean, my, I, and I'm very grateful uh, for you to have me, and hopefully somebody will hear this podcast and go out and uh, and buy the book. Um, mm-hmm. And, I, I, you know, I, it's gratifying to know that people like it. Uh, and also, I appreciate negative criticism. I have, fortunately, I haven't had a whole lot of that yet. But you know, it's it's uh, it's going to be out there. But um, yeah, it's it's um, it's good. It's ego stimulating sometimes to have people say, "Well, I really like that book." And tell me about what, where, you know, what what was Augie doing there when when uh, the the, uh, the hooch exploded? What was, you know? They cut. They bring in specific kind of. Uh, uh, scenes and and want to talk about them and, and that's uh, that's kind of nice. Mhm, absolutely. Yeah. So we've talked about um, a number of topics today, but is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like for people to know about the book? No, I mean it's available just about uh, anywhere online. Um, and if you want, your local bookstore can order it or for, for you. Um, so. I mean, I would I would go to the website, read some of the excerpts, check the reviews out. Um, if you want to le- read a little bit about why and how I wrote the novel, uh, like some of the things we talk about today, it's on there. So, 
yeah, I mean, that's I can't think of anything else. I mean, I've got a, a Twitter handle. Uh, it's called Vines and Vittles. And there's another one that is just John H. Brown, uh, Augie's War. And, um, of course, Facebook page for Augie's War. Um, and, and, and one for me where I write about, uh, um, you know, w- when something happens about with Augie or, but yeah, so I mean, those, those are kind of the, the um, platforms where you can find me on social media. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to yeah, me well, about the book. Well, I, I really appreciate you have, giving me the opportunity. Yeah, I really enjoyed the book. Um, so thank you so much. And once again, I want to say thank you to John for joining me for the interview. As always, I really enjoyed talking to an author about his novel and the process of writing that novel, what went into it. I was very happy to read a book about an area of history that I haven't read much on and need to do more studying on because uh, as a history major, I did study it some, but uh, you know, like I've mentioned before, I, I've, I've done a lot of novels from the World War II era, but not as much from this era. So, or if it is from this, if, when I do read from this era, it tends to be more on the um, state side, hippie, peace loving, you know, that kind of angle, and less on the war itself. So, this made me realize that I need to do some more research and some more reading. So, John, thank you for that. Thank you for the book. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners. I wouldn't be here without you. So, I so appreciate you. And as part of that appreciation, I have books to give away. So, if you are interested in reading Augie's War by John H. Brown, I do have signed copies to give away. It's very easy. All you have to do is go to our GSMC Book Review social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Those links are in the show notes of this show or they are on our website either way. Oh, and you know, if you follow us, then you already know where they are. Please follow us on social media. I would love that. I would love to hear from you. So just go to the GSMC book review, social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and comment on this episode. It's episode 151 interview with John H. Brown. Each of those social media will have media sites will have a post. Just comment on the post and you will automatically be entered to win a copy of Augie's War. Um, please do also like the the post, share the post, follow our pages, etc. But in order to win a copy, you do need to comment on one of those posts. So um, thank you again to John. Thank you to you, my readers. As usual, I hope you are having a wonderful week. I hope you will join me again for the next episode of the GSMC Book Review Podcast. But mostly, I hope that you have time every single day to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.